Hello everyone, Jocelyn here. Just hit the table. <laughs> As if I'm not bad enough at intros already. So, <laughs> hi. So today's video, I'm going to introduce a new topic to this channel. Basically, I want to talk about two things. One of them is so obvious, of course, LGBT plus topics. That's what I do here most of the time. The other thing I want to talk about is my other, you know, passion in life is gaming. And what I want to eventually do is talk more about gaming on here as well. I will, I, I've, you know, decided that I'm going to do it on here rather than a second channel, but I will make it separate. I will have its own playlist to sort of go through, just one specifically dedicated to gaming. It worked for Jan Misili, it might work for me. <laughs> so, today's video specifically is kind of a response to a video that I saw recently and although I really hope the creator sees it, she probably won't. But it would be nice, you know. Um, so this is my thoughts based on the recent video posted by YouTuber Rowan Ellis entitled Why D&D is so popular with LGBT nerds. Now this information that D&D is so popular with LGBT plus crowd is not surprising but it is news to me, considering how much during my time I've been playing d and I've had so many cishet gaming cohorts. You know, the majority of them are straight and cisgender, and I'm still pretty much the outcast when it comes to that. Um, very few of them are, well... I'd say the majority are still male, um, and I'd say the like very v big majority is still Caucasian white people. Um, so although diversity is encouraged within the game mechanics, it's still rather a homogenous group that I have experienced gaming D&D with. The reasons for LGBT plus people being drawn towards D&D, as outlined in Rowan Ellis's video, was somewhat obvious to me. There's the reasons of, you know, this gives you an opportunity to explore new identities and new roles and, you know, like new situations and how do you, how do you sort of adapt to that. There's also freedom of world building that a lot of RPGs, especially video game RPGs, do not allow for, where D&D, &D, especially homebrew stuff, allows for a lot more sandbox kind of just creativity, um, like pretty much limitless. Uh, there is also the aspect of confronting IRL issues in a safe role play environment with a safe role playing group of buddies that you know really well. And of course that, of course, encourages more bonding in a, you know, let's go on a quest, let's go on an adventure together kind of, you know, it, it just helps build friendships it helps build sort of teamwork. Um, it allows you to express things and, you know, feel closer to people that way. So the reasons they're not surprising, very understandable, especially from where I'm coming from. And I think that video does a really good job of explaining why from quite a few different people's perspectives as well. I just, I just loved it. <laughs> So I want to talk a little bit about my own sort of personal journey with D&D as well. 
I started playing back in 2017, uh, the summer thereof, and I was introduced to a tabletop RPG group by my then boyfriend. And I had wanted to get into it for a long time. I'd heard of it ever since I was a child, you know. And I was into sort of myths and monsters and magic kind of fantasy. Um, D&D was not at all what I expected it to be. It really wasn't. I expected something a bit more of a structured board game rather than an open... And I mean this in the nicest way. It doesn't sort of apply for everyone. But for me, the way I see D&D is as ad-lib, improv, with dice rolls. And, you know, stats and mechanics and things. So, anyway, <laughs> back to the story. Um... By this time, I was already out as trans. I had actually met my then boyfriend at a board gaming group. And these two things sort of tie fairly closely together in, in the minds of people who like, um, you know, gaming and, and role playing and things like that. Like some people are exclusive, one or the other, but there is a fair amount of crossover as well. So yeah, I was already out as trans by then. I'd been out as trans since, God, um, 2003-ish. Like, obviously I've been trans a lot longer than that. I've been trans ever since I was born, but I was just sort of out from that time. So very sort of established tran at this point. Um, <laughs> and I hate to say that I wasn't very creative with my first character concept because this was a whole new thing for me and I was sort of out of my comfort zone. So I thought, okay, let's make this character a reflection of that. So my character was out of their comfort zone. This is a girl with a mysterious history that, you know, could be worked on with the DM later and just sort of dropped into this magical world, you know, from a young age sort of thing. And the idea behind this was that we were all graduating, going to an island, and then, you know, crazy shit happened, as it tends to do. So my character's name was actually Lynn which is the last three letters of my full name. Whereas normally I shorten it with the first three letters rather than the last three letters. So that was <laughs> not amazingly creative. And the character was also a human as well. But that was my introduction. It was kind of like fish out of water, both in character and out of character. Since then, I have played a range, diversity of characters, straight women, gay men, married non-binary, celestial beings, pansexual bards, because bards, <laughs> um, transgender drow, that was interesting. Uh, because that was a rogue who was constantly in disguise and nobody really knew their true identity. And towards sort of the end of that campaign, I needed a new identity and a new look. So I went from uh, male to female. Uh, it, there was a whole situation involving another drow, a love potion... And a wedding dress. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my, my current character is actually a celibate monk. So I don't really know about his sexuality. This, this is a male character, though. I do know that. But um, one of the things that I've done 
over this time is discover my non-binary genderqueer like identity and I won't say that D&D &D was responsible for that but it certainly did have a weird parallel because at the time I was playing in this group my my character this was the married non-binary Asimar character who was actually married to a vampire who had donated his heart to save her. I wasn't in charge of this backstory. <laughs> who, when I was first introduced to him, he was actually a bat, and I thought he was a pet. Fucking furries. <laughs> anyway. I had the sort of epiphany, the understanding that, yeah, actually, I'm not a woman, I'm non-binary. And this character just sort of seemed perfect for someone as gendery bendery as me when I first sort of picked from the options. And then about halfway th through, uh, actually sort of doing this campaign, I then took the initiative to, in real life, say, hey, um, actually, I know it's kind of a hassle and everything, but I actually need people to use they, them pronouns for me. And I also asked to switch pronouns from she to they for the character as well. This did not stick, as as uh, it is difficult for people to switch, and sometimes habit more than anything else. It's not disrespect necessarily. It's just people are used to what they're used to, and changing is difficult, especially if it's some sort of repeated habit over time. So. Unfortunately, that did not stick, but in real life, I'm finding that more people do now respect that. And if I'm going to choose between my character's pronoun switch and my own personal pronoun switch, I'm glad it was that one that stuck. My current group, and this is how much sort of gender politics has influenced my current group, because um, when COVID hit, I went down from three groups to one. Um, and we've been playing on Zoom for quite some time. So this group now asks for characters, pronouns and gender when, you know, also delivering other important information like race and class, which you know, are pretty much baked into this is what is ha happening with this character. Oh, you're a wood elf and you're a cleric. Got it. That's very much like how you see a character. And now my group treat gender and pronouns as somewhat more important than even something like alignment, which that's its own story as well because alignment is something that's a very sort of nebulous term and some people treat it as descriptive some people treat it as prescriptive we tend to favor the former because alignments just like people can shift over time and it's really just sort of a recording of well here's here's where you're at at the moment it could fluctuate it's a bit of a spectrum just like gender and also, it's only really useful in certain few mechanical uh, uh, situations. Like, um, there's a spell, I can't remember what it's called, but if you are good or neutral, it summons fey creatures. And if you are evil, it summons like demonic looking creatures. But the spell functions the same way. 
can't remember what it's called. Um, I'll probably put it in the comments later. Some of the cishet straight people that are in my life that do play D&D, sometimes they do play like different genders than themselves, different sexualities than themselves, and they still are cis and straight. It's just, it's not, it's not like a taking the piss kind of way. It's more like a putting themselves into another person's shoes, another person's experience, and seeing how that feels and how, like, how that person might feel. And one of the great things about d and I think, is that it does teach people cooperation and empathy in that sort of sense. So it's really great. Um... I think that's everything I wanted to say on this topic, really, just as a sort of, like I said, a semi sort of response to that video that was, you know, I, I was nodding along and in, in agreement with it pretty hard, <laughs> you know, throughout the whole thing. And then thinking about my own experiences with D&D &D as well. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. See you next time. Non-binary and even non-binary D&D fantasy characters are valid, goddammit. Drama nerds gonna hate me for forgetting this. Improvisation. <laughs> Improv, that's the word I was looking for. Wow, that took me far too long. Okay, so yeah, kind of, kind of an improv advert. Uh, fuck. Fuck. Ah. <laughs> Just love that siren. I, I, I love living on a main road. It's great. Makes me feel alive, like I'm close to the people. Fuck off, people. Uh, anyway. <laughs>